If you've watched the Stanley Kubrick film Dr. Strangelove, in one of the scenes, the characters discuss a so-called doomsday device the Soviets have created. In the movie, this device automatically triggers in the event of a nuclear attack on Soviet soil, detonating all of the USSR's nuclear arsenal, extinguishing all life on the surface of Earth. Of course, in the movie, a rogue bomber does not get called off, drops its payload on the Soviet Union, thus triggering the device. The concept of the Doomsday Machine, however, is not one of Kubrick's creations, but is instead the theoretical construction of scientists such as Leo Szilard and Hermann Kahn, functioning in a similar way to the film. However, it did not simply exist in theory, as the Soviet dead hand system would have functioned in this capacity in the event of a nuclear attack. This video will discuss the theoretical foundations of the Doomsday Machine, how it feeds into the theory of mutually assured destruction, and the Soviet's dead hand nuclear system. Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD, has been the prevailing policy guiding nuclear warfare doctrine for the last half century and more. It was originally coined by Donald Brennan, a Hudson Institute strategist in 1962, and suggested that if two sides of a nuclear conflict had enough weapons to destroy the other side, an attack from either side would result in a catastrophic nuclear apocalypse which would result in inconceivable human losses. This mere possibility is supposed to deter either side from launching a nuclear weapon in the first place, fearing the potential consequences. However, this idea assumes both sides strike at exactly the same time, and can therefore enact an equal amount of destruction. This does not account for the possibility of a first strike by one nation, which could target the enemy's missile silos, key government buildings, key government leaders and their communications infrastructure, which would limit the ability for the other nation to respond with their own nuclear arsenal. This is where the Doomsday Device or Doomsday Machine comes in. This device, proposed in writing first by Hermann Kahn in his 1960 book On Thermonuclear War, would be a theoretical network of computers and machines linked to a country's nuclear arsenal and would automatically trigger in the event of a nuclear detonation. This would guard against the aforementioned first strike possibility. If the USSR were to have such a machine like in the movie and the US launched a nuclear attack wiping out all their leadership and communications infrastructure, the doomsday device would trigger, detonating several nuclear bombs, engulfing the planet with the cloud of radiation and wiping out almost all life on the surface of planet Earth. The doomsday machine would thus be the ultimate form of deterrence as no nation would be willing to launch the first strike due to the apocalyptic consequences. For this to be true, the nation with the doomsday device would have to make that information public, otherwise it couldn't possibly be a deterrent if the other side doesn't know it exists. In Dr. Strangelove, this concept is parodied, as the Soviet ambassador reveals the existence of the doomsday device only after the rogue bombers were launched, negating its entire purpose of being a deterrent. The machine would satisfy five of the six characteristics of deterrence, that it would be frightening, inexorable as it is immune to physical destruction, persuasive, cheap and foolproof as it would detonate automatically. The only characteristic it would fail to meet is that it is not controllable as it triggers automatically and human intervention could not stop its activation. Although being the theoretical ultimate form of deterrence, Khan only theorized such a creation and never advocated for it to be actually implemented. The consequences, he believed, were far too disastrous, and there is too much to lose in the event that such a device was triggered. However, as we will soon find out, this doomsday device is not just a work of fiction or theory, but did exist in reality and continues to exist today. In the 1960s, the concept of a doomsday machine was just that, a concept or work of fiction, existing solely in media like Doctor Strange Love and the writings of nuclear strategists like Herman Kahn. Kubrick's film was ruthlessly criticized by some, creating a great deal of controversy when it was released. The idea that a rogue US general could initiate a nuclear war independent of any higher authority, and the fact that the Soviets could have such a weapon that would extinguish the human race, was considered too ridiculous by some, and outright Soviet propaganda by others. On the first count, that is, the idea that a rogue general could launch a nuclear missile is not that ridiculous as it turns out. The Eisenhower administration reluctantly gave high-level commanders and Air Force pilots the autonomy to launch their arsenal in the event that the president or another person who could act in his stead could not be reached. The premise of Kubrick's film is thus not totally ludicrous as many at the time suggested. On the second count, however, the idea that the Soviets would have such a doomsday device was also not as ridiculous as it might initially seem. Although Khan only theorized the device, never actually advocating for such a thing to be built, it turns out the Soviets did actually build such a machine. The Soviet perimeter system, or unofficially Metvaya Ruka, the dead hand, was completed in 1985. 
it functioned exactly as a doomsday device would and would retaliate automatically in the event of a US nuclear strike on Soviet soil. The system would remain in a semi-dormant state and only switched on in the event of a crisis by some high-ranking Soviet official. If turned on, the system would check if there were communication links to the Soviet general staff. After that, it would check after 15 minutes to one hour for indications of any further attacks. If there were no further attacks, the machine would assume officials were still alive and shut down. However, if the lines of communication to the general staff were severed, it would assume a nuclear war had started and transfer launch authority to whoever was manning the system in a deep underground bunker to launch the counterattack. Once activated, the machine would first launch a series of 15P011 command missiles from fortified silos, which would transmit orders and codes to whatever Soviet weapons survived the initial attack, launching the remaining Soviet nuclear arsenal at predetermined targets. The Dead Hand system differed from Khan's Doomsday device as it was not a hair trigger device, but remained semi-dormant, only activated during times of crisis as previously mentioned. Also, the Dead Hand system would launch its weapons at actual targets, while Khan's Doomsday machine would just detonate its nuclear arsenal and bathe the planet in toxic nuclear radiation. Although created in the mid-80s, the existence of the system was not revealed until after the USSR's collapse in 1991. And as Khan stated, the Doomsday Machine only works as a deterrent if its existence is made public information. In that case, what was the purpose of the Dead Hand system in the context of a possible nuclear exchange if not to act as a deterrent against the first strike from the United States? In an interview with NPR, the American radio network, The Wired Magazine's senior editor, Nicholas Thompson, explains that there were three main reasons why the USSR kept the machine a secret. Quote, one, they're extremely secretive. They didn't tell their own arms negotiators. Number two is if you tell the United States about it, there's a better chance that we could disable or trick it or destroy it. But then the third reason is that it wasn't built as a classic deterrent. It was built to deter the Soviet Union. It was built to prevent this issue of launch on false warning, and that is the Soviet radars pick up what they think is an American nuclear strike. The Soviet Union was indeed a very secretive and isolated country, which explains why they wouldn't have shared this information to other nations. It is possible that if the US was aware of the existence of the dead hand, they would have tried to sabotage it in some way. But curiously enough, as Thompson says, the Soviets kept the existence of the machine an internal secret as well, and leading arms negotiators such as Yuli Kvitsinsky had no idea. And the third reason, curiously, is that the Soviets intended for the dead hand to be an internal deterrent. The existence of the Doomsday Machine means that in the event of a crisis, where the Soviet commanders at the machine are not sure whether they're detecting a nuclear missile or a flock of geese, they do not have to respond immediately with their arsenal. This system still exists in Russia to this day, but it is uncertain whether it is currently active or not. And although the term was popularized by the Stanley Kubrick film Dr. Strangelove, the conception of a doomsday nuclear device was put forward in detail by Herman Kahn in his book On Thermonuclear War, published in 1960. Furthermore, this system was actually created and active during the latter part of the Cold War and would have been activated if Moscow was hit with a nuclear device, as Daniel Ellsberg, former US nuclear strategist and leaker of the Pentagon Papers, posits in his book The Doomsday Machine. It is entirely possible that other nuclear-capable nations like China or Britain have similar systems or arrangements in the event of a nuclear attack. One thing is for certain though, that Dr. Strangelove was and is an effective satire of the Cold War nuclear arms race, and that a doomsday machine, if active, could end all life on Earth as the film predicted. I end with a quote from Ellsberg's book. The bottom line, once again, this is not a species to be trusted with nuclear weapons. Above all, not to be trusted with a full or partial doomsday machine. And that doesn't just apply to crazy third world leaders. Thanks for watching.